you're looking at the eyes of Sharon Tate. Those are the actual eyelashes of Sharon Tate that Troy and I got at the Sharon Tate auction at uh, Julian's. And I dusted them off for this video today, which is another of my show and tell videos. And this time it's about once upon a time in Hollywood. Do you see my dorky outfit? I bought the shirt. I bought this shirt because I liked it. And uh, my friend Neil sent me this uh, champion t-shirt, which I've never put on until today. I've been waiting for it today. So uh, so thank you, uh, Neil. And and I'm going to show you, tell you a little bit about my history with the movie. So it started with this text, actually. And this is a text I got from an employee of mine. This is February 22nd, 2018. Quentin Tarantino's handler, which is kind of funny. I'm sure that's not what, you know, how they introduced themselves. Uh, just called for you. Quentin wants to meet with you about this new project. Guess it's a Manson thing. So that was the first text. So when I returned the, uh, the call, I was asked to come into this meeting to meet with uh, the team from this movie, yet untitled uh, project. And, uh, and I ended up being introduced to, to Quentin and we ended up sitting there for quite a while talking about the case because he had seen the documentary that Mike and I did called The Six Degrees of Helter Skelter. So they took me on as a uh, advisor, historical consultant because of the, the Tate LaBianca Helter Skelter thing. And, um, and I just wanted to, I've never shown this to anyone before, but I wanted you to see this. This was a, a payment I got, and I'm not saying that, like, you know, this is partially of what I got to actually work on the movie. And it's just kind of fun because at that point, the, the movie title was Untitled Number Nine. And the, uh, the office I met them in is on Sunset, just by the Burger King at La Brea. And, uh, and I got this, and I actually um, went out with Tarantino and those guys. I'll tell you that in a minute, but I wanted to show you this, because this is the confidentiality, confidentiality agreement I had to, to, uh, to sign for that. The 3rd of February of 2018 is when I signed that. That's when I, the day I went out with Quentin and those guys, and we went to Jay Sebring's house, and I took him up to Cielo Drive. And I got that picture of myself and Quentin, at J.C. Brings Old House on Easton Drive in Benedict Canyon. And this is, I've, I've told this before, but this is the same place there's that photograph of Sharon Tate uh, standing. And I asked them afterwards if I was able to, in, to you know, um, share this picture with people because I was so excited because I was working on this movie. And they told me I couldn't because of the confidentiality agreement. And another kind of interesting fun fact is that this guy, Damon Harriman, I took out on a tour. So he hadn't been cast yet as Manson in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He had actually taken my tour with a couple of his friends for Mindhunter. He was cast as Manson in the show Mindhunter. And it was just a coincidence, or not you know, coincidence in my book, that he got cast as Manson. And when he did get cast as Manson, I shared this photograph uh, on Instagram, and I got shut down by, by Tarantino's people because I'd signed the NDA, and apparently no one was supposed to know, even though it was in all the trade papers, that Damon Harriman had been... Uh, had been cast as Manson, but anyway, and I and I'd been in touch with uh, Damon afterwards. He's he's uh, just to say thanks, and he was very kind. And anyway, I'll, that's not that important. Now, during that year of of them filming around Los Angeles, it was an incredible time, and most everyone has heard me talk about this over and over again. But this is when they they recreated Jay Sebring's shot, and I went there and uh, for that, you can see Jay here in front of the shop, and you can see how they recreated it, and and. In fact, there's Jay's Porsche, well, for the movie, and there's even dry cleaning in the window that has Jay Sebring's name on it. And uh, and this is where I, I saw Quentin, and I got to meet Emil Hirsch, and uh, and I saw Margot Robbie there, and um, and that was just it was a magical time in Los Angeles. So all of these things, oh, okay. So then they decided I'm cutting forward till when the premiere happened of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It was before the world premiere when they had it at the Groman's Chinese Theater that they showed it at the Arclight, which is that Cinerama Dome, and that's one of Tarantino's favorite theaters. So roughly uh, a good week or so before it was released at the big premiere at the Chinese Theater, he had a screening of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood at the uh, at the uh, Arclight, which is the company that owns the uh, Cinerama Dome, or used to. So I, I was able to score tickets for this thing, and it was a, it was a, it was a, something you had to buy tickets for. Anyone could have gone, and it was before the original release, but we did get uh, tickets for it. It was the July 20th, 20th 
So it was before the premiere of it, which was really, really exciting. And these are the commemorative tickets that they handed out that night. They were doing a whole Tarantino weekend, Once Upon a Time in Tarantino, ending it up with the premiere of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that Saturday night. And before the, before the show was uh, uh, began, there was a little cocktail party outside in the lobby. And they were selling cocktails in these glasses which you can kind of see here. The Arclight Cinemas, and of course the other side is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So the, they had these commemorative, commemorative, we still had to pay, I think our drinks were like 12 or 15 bucks each, but I, I got as many as I could, and thankfully, I'm glad I did, because I have a little bit of a collection of these things, which I'm happy about. And, uh, and so that was the commemorative ticket, and this from that. And what I'm gonna do is put, insert here, Tarantino's introduction to the movie that I took. Uh, I was I wasn't that far from the very front of it, and uh, and Tarantino walked up, and I got this footage of him introducing his own movie for the first time to be seen in public. In seventy no. And I'm very excited to see it with paying people who could do anything in the world they wanted to do tonight, but they decided to spend it here with me. Thank you very much. And by the way, I'm pushing all of your shirts. I mean, the, the, the Geek Army is in full effect. Uh, if I, I could, I could literally spend a month watching every movie that's on every one of your shirts right now. That would be a, that'd be a month well spent. Uh, we worked really hard on this. I'm really excited that you guys are here. I'm excited to watch it with you. Don't bother me when it's over. I'm not going to take a photo with you. I'm not going to sign shit, all right? I'm going to enjoy watching it with you, so don't ruin it when it's over. Let me ask a question, though. How many, uh, so how many people here have seen any of the other Tarantino movies that have been playing over the weekend? Cool, cool. I've seen a few of them. I saw, uh, I saw Death Proof uh, two hours ago, and that was a blast. Uh, I saw Kill Bill uh, 1 last night here at the Dome. That was fantastic. And I'm going to see uh, Hateful Eight, all right, for the first time in the Dome, long, long overdue, uh, tomorrow. And I guess I'm done talking. Let's get one. Wicked Black Heart. Thank you very much for showing up and let's enjoy the film. Thank you very much. In Los Angeles, when they are filming a movie, they anyone that's in the neighborhood that's affected by the movie gets these notices on their front doors or the front of their business saying that they're going to be uh, filming some production. Now, the working title for this movie, which is sort of the secretive title that they call it until they actually name it or release the name of it, is uh, for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, is Magnum Opus, M. Oh, uh, with the initials. So, whenever you see, whenever you saw these around town, and not a whole lot of people knew it was called Magnum Opus yet. These are these are tagged anywhere they were going to be filming. So, these are from all all of the different shoots. But you can see the um, the the notice of filming, and you'll see this the, what they're actually going to be doing: autumn autumn atmospheric smoke effects, interior and exterior dialogue car to car drive by so this must have been from the hollywood boulevard shoots yeah cherokee and hollywood boulevard at las palmas that was that block that they restored to 1969. here's another one production title magnum opus parking restrictions only which just means they're going to be taking up the space for their for their cars that are they're going to be using in the movie so there's not going to be any mo motion this one notices for parking restrictions only this is on van ness avenue because i lived at seven on the 700 block of van ness so a lot of the some of the filming was actually right across the street from me in raleigh studios which was just where i walked decker there every night again raleigh studio so all these are from the actual filming of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. 
Yeah, most of these are from filming, uh, from that parking restrictions. They only had that one that was from Hollywood Boulevard. And one of the things that they did was they took Joseph's Restaurant in the middle of Hollywood and painted it all these different colors to resemble Pandora's box, the nightclub uh, where the quote riot on the Sunset Strip happened. And they covered it in these in this purple and, and uh, orange paint. And it did look really spectacular. And there was a point where Brad Pitt stops in front of it uh, during the movie and he waves at um, this one. <laughs> Forget her name. But, uh, but yeah, and of course she's hugely famous now. But uh, th these are the actual blueprints or color prints that the staff gave me from them making these panels to cover Joseph's restaurant to make it into Pandora's box. And here's another one of them. So just kind of cool that these actually are from the production. Slice panel 1B. Slice 2 panel 1B. So it's all these technical specifications for them to cover that actual restaurant, which is neat. I got these when I was hanging out with Elisa from LA Woman Tours. And, um, and we were able to visit the site. Now, I know we're a little bit all over the place. This is when they were actually filming on Benedict Canyon Boulevard on Cielo Drive. And they, they used as much of Cielo Drive as they could in real life. And so this is the corner of Cielo Drive and Benedict Canyon. And as you can see, it's magnum opus, M-O. And uh, they're just pointing to where the production was gonna be parking. And this particular sign, I'm so glad I did this, is, uh, is right here. So this is actually a working from the production, actually, and it's actually the best for me because it's the corner of Benedict Canyon and Cielo Drive. So this is a, a very important souvenir to me. Now, I'm gonna try to quickly go through this stuff because there's just so much of it, and I didn't realize there was so much of it until I was unpacking it. Uh, this is just some various souvenirs that I got from the production or or ephemera, memorabilia that they do sell. Now this was, Terry Bolo actually gave this to me, Quentin Tarantino's new Beverly Cinema. This is when they premiered Once Upon a Time in Hollywood there. And you can see the dates on it, it was July 25th, 26th, and 27th of uh, 2019. And this is the theater that actually shows up briefly in the movie when they head into the El Coyote Theater and Sharon Tate notices the premiere of the Dirty Movie Theater, uh, premiere at the Dirty Movie Theater, and that is the new Beverly Cinema, which is actually Tarantino's own theater. Now, on the night that they showed it at the Arclight, they were giving out these, and uh, these, this is just sort of like a, a play magazine for Rick Dalton, Leonardo DiCaprio's character and different scenes from the movie are in it. And the other thing that they gave out at the premiere, and thank you, Rebecca, actually, she gave me one of these, uh, our lovely Rebecca, Red Apple. That That's unusual because this is one of his sort of in-jokes through all the movies or references. Red Apple cigarettes are in there quite a bit. And one of these buttons I have is a Red Apple pin. And I forget where I where I got this, probably at the New Beverly Theater. But these are the ones that go for like big bucks. I don't understand that. They go for like, you know, hundreds of dollars online. And I think I paid five bucks for it somewhere. But uh, yeah, that particular pin is a big collector's item uh, for Tarantino buffs. And they were also giving out that night these maps, which are a little souvenir map of Los Angeles, different locations pertaining to the movie, Cliff's Trailer in Van Nuys, Casa Vega, Casa Vega restaurant that they shot in the Chinese theater, Capitol Records, you know, Chateau Marmont, Rick Dalton's house. So it's not, it's all over the place. The Playboy Mansion, there's the Cinerama that I was telling you about where the movie, where we saw it that night, Columbia Pictures. I mean, these, these are just kind of fun maps that they were giving out at the I hate to say, I keep saying premiere, but it was actually just the first time it was shown as the premiere for odd paying audience members. But the actual world premiere wasn't until later on with uh, at the Chinese theater. So that was a cool thing that they were giving out at the uh, at that showing, the first time it was ever shown in public. Put these over here. Now, 
some of these items, I'm just going to whiz through them because these are just odds and ends I've collected over the year. These are Sebring postcards, reproductions. They were given to be my friend Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. And uh, so these are these are these are copies of J. Sebring's um, actual, I guess, business cards of some sort. But that was the old location, and that was when an old ad my friend Patrick gave me these. And a nice person, a uh, fan of uh, what I do, gave, sent me that. And I forget who you are, but thank you. And these are some of the souvenirs that I, I've got. Here's a, a Once Upon a Time in Hollywood air freshener. <laughs> I think they sold these at the New Beverly Theater. And along with this one, because they were selling these, uh, these two air fresheners. And this is the dog food that Cliff... Um, uh, feeds Brandy, his dog. And here's a can of <laughs> Wolf's Tooth Dog Food. <laughs> now, <laughs> so much stuff. And I'm trying to get this through this quickly. My friend um, Kimberly gave me these. These are a fairly new addition to the Rick Dalton uh, ephemera memorabilia that they were selling at the New Beverly theater, which, which is that famous line that Brad Pitt says, famous to the people who love this movie, uh, he says, you're, you're Rick Buck and Dalton, and these, so Kimberly gave me those, thank you very much, Kimberly, and here are some other items that they were selling or giving away at the New Beverly, here are more buttons, that's Thingy, what's his name again? Uh, Luke Perry. Luke Perry, and that's... Andy McDowell's kid, <laughs> and there's, there's Kurt Russell, and there's Brandy. This is a, it's a curious collection of who they decide to represent in buttons. And then here's another button that I just love this presentation. That is so cool, the way they, uh, the way they put that together. I love that. They were selling these at the New Beverly. Cliff Booth, Hollywood Stuntman, Movies and TV. And also these, which coincided with the book release when Tarantino decided to release the book version, which is here, uh, the novel of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. They were selling these as well. They are smart with their merchandise. They really are. And then <laughs> they, started, they were selling these, which are the bookmarks for the books. So uh, there's Brandy. See the movie, read the book. See the movie, read the book. There's another one. And there's a, see the movie, read the book. There's Sharon Tate. So this is, this is really good stuff. They, I mean, really quality stuff. They could have been so, uh, so cheesy. And it is cheesy fun, though. But this is just like movies used to be in the 60s, which is like the whole point. And these are some buttons that I actually made. Uh, I'm not going to take them out, but I made these. And I, was, I, I had them at the shop when we still had our shop. The little um, Leonardo DiCaprio, just the, the sort of the high points of the movie, and I call it the movie. Okay, there's I know there's a lot going on here, and there's tons more to go, so uh, I'm going to move on. These items uh, were a, a, another marketing amazing fun thing is that Tarantino had. Uh, created had this cover created for a mad magazine and and you know touting leonardo dicaprio's character rick dalton and i got this from the man who actually wrote this or drew this and that's uh this guy right here tom uh tom richmond who is who designed these two illustrations a phony tv guide cover and also a uh, the Mad Magazine cover. So these are, I mean, this is genius. And, and he made these out to me, which was kind of cool. Now, as I understand it, when they were making the movie, Tarantino gifted the cast and crew with certain things. And this was one of the things that uh, he, he gave to people working on the movie. And this is a bandana, a rainbow, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood bandana. Uh, this is an odd, he's so good at merchandising. This is an odd little nugget. Here is a <laughs> Once Upon a Time in Hollywood luggage tag slash USB charger thing. <laughs> you know? So you could, you, could, you could mark where your luggage is and you can also charge your phones uh, with this thing. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's a very interesting little nugget of, uh, of uh, merchandising. 
and it's sharp. I like it a lot. It's very cute. One of the other things he had commissioned was a Once Upon a Time in Hollywood lunchbox. I used to collect lunch boxes back in the day. I had a lot of them too. I had some good ones, Monsters and Lost in Space and Land of the Giants. So this is kind of a cool thing that he had uh, released. And also within it, is a thermos. A Once Upon a Time in Hollywood thermos. Ooh. Not glass though. <laughs> Remember those? Oh my God! When those shattered, that was that, and they always did. So that's uh, this is a kind of a cool thing. Well, they're all cool things as far as I'm concerned. Now, when he lived, when the movie was released, and I'm all over the place with the timeline here, and when it was finally released on DVD, there was a special edition released, and this is the the DVD that was released. It's actually a Blu-ray of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And look at this presentation. Again, he is so smart with what he does. There's a 45 adapter because this came with a blue 45 of Bring Little Eleven by Los Bravos. Oh, there's my ticket to seeing it. Oh, do you know what? Because I took this with us because we went to see Barbara Ling, who was the production designer on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, who's the one who put Hollywood back to 1969, actually the one who made all the plans to do it. And she did a little talk after the movie at the New Beverly Cinema when they were showing it one night, and I got to talk to her for a little while. Oh, and we reminisced about all that time we spent together. <laughs> but no, but she did remember me, which was kind of cool. And, uh, and I asked her to autograph this for me. So that's Barbara Ling, who won the Academy Award later that year for this movie, uh, for being the production designer for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And uh, when I showed her this, she goes, I've never seen that before. <laughs> she goes, he is so good at this stuff. And then I asked her about the Jay Sebring scene and, the, uh, and his house that they know they shot at, my friend's house. And she said, well, everyone knows Quentin made a four and a half hour movie, so I looked for that at some point. But this is the the mini Mad Magazine. That is that cool. It's, a, it's like a Kool Aid, a fake Kool Aid ad, full Aid, like wacky packages. And uh, and it came with a Rick Dalton poster, mini poster. So this is again just quality, cool stuff. And when he when he released the soundtrack, he released this is the soundtrack and double album set. And in it is a poster, a Once Upon a Time in Hollywood poster, which I'm not going to open up because it's really kind of awkward. And these cool album sleeves, which they used to be, you know, they used to, when they when they uh, when they released soundtracks back in the day, good soundtracks were always on cool double album sets. And this one's on orange vinyl. I know it's like it's like you can read your mind. This is like the coolest stuff. Eesh, I don't like that sound. But yeah, he, he, these are, oh, here's another, oh, it came with one of these too. It's not the same one we got that night, but he, these are other ones that were in, that were included in the, uh, in the album. Now, these items are not specific to the production of the movie, but because I'm a geek, uh, I saved these things, too. These are some uh, some of the things from the restaurants that were featured in the movie. Terry Bolo gave us these, which is from Musso Frank, the restaurant that was uh, featured with uh, the, the Al Pacino meeting at the beginning and the scene in the back parking lot in the movie. So that was an important location in the movie. Of course, the El Coyote, which has been one of my favorite restaurants for many, many years, uh, they were giving these things out uh, several years ago, and the matches and the napkins. And when COVID hit, that <laughs> the takeout menu, and uh, one of the old packs of matches. These are the sort of the newer ones, but these are older. And here's an old El Coyote shot glass. I don't think they sell those anymore. And a Casa Vega, which was used in a couple of scenes in the movie. Uh, that's a that's a napkin from Casa Vega and the last time we were there they had a drink called the Dakota for um for her Dakota Fanning right that's what she's called yeah the Dakota now some of the other items that I have from the uh 
relating to the movie. And this is just, when I see stuff I don't have, I buy it. And these are just some, <laughs> for no purpose whatsoever, these odd little cards that are illegal, I'm sure. Then, you know, somebody marketed it. I think they came from Japan or something like that. So just cards having to do with the production of the movie or publicity stills from the movie. And then someone else was selling these postcards. They're really thick ones too. They're like the, they're, they're solid and they're matte. So um, they're high quality. Look at that, they're matte. And um, so these are kind of cool too. There was a huge influx of these things, uh, and now not so much. Now these are different items that, I haven't seen these, I haven't opened this yet, but I saw this and my friend Anne uh, in Britain let me ship this to her because they wanted like 20 bucks to send this to me. And, uh, and she allowed me to send it to her and I was able to get this, but I haven't seen it yet. Always, always. <laughs> it's always the most complicated thing. There we go. Bounty Law and Hullabaloo. Hullabaloo button. I love this thing. It's on a Bounty Law thing. And some guy called Danny sold it to me. <laughs> so thanks, Anne, for letting me ship that to you. And thank you for shipping it to me. And I know I started this one. Oh, this was something I'd never seen before. And uh, I'd only seen it once, and of course then I just bought it. So I don't even know if it's legit. But the sale said that it was another one of those things that Tarantino gave out to the cast and crew of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And this is another bandana that says Bounty Law on it. It's like a, it's like, it's like silky-ish. So I don't know if it's, um, it's a bandana or scarf or what. But uh, I'll open this whole thing up so you can see the whole thing there. Yeah, it's unusual because I've only ever, is this 2018, which is interesting because that's when they shot the movie, which would make sense if this was a gift to the cast and crew. But, because it wasn't released till 2019. So, but another thing that I do know that came for the production, which is a really rare uh, sort of piece of memorabilia from the movie is this. And this was a hat that he gave out to the cast and crew. And Boss is um, the radio station, KHJ, that was featured in the, uh, in the show on AM radio. And this is something that's really hard to find. It has the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood logo on the back of it. So Boss Radio is what it was called. So they, um, yeah, there was, there's only one other thing from the production that I've seen around that I really want. I forget what it is, but I love this hat and, um, and this too, but I, this is really unusual. So I don't know if that's something somebody made up or what, but I do like it very much. Now, a couple of other things that I have, here's a, a sign that I bought. This is one of those things that they show in movie theaters, it's just about movie times. Just one of those things they would slide into the little lighted box to reflect what movie is showing. I got lots of stuff like this. Some of the uh, t-shirts that they were selling, they were selling these at the New Beverly. And unfortunately, well, I, I started wearing this, but then I thought, oh no, I shouldn't wear it because it's gonna be really rare one day, so I should keep it. So I stopped wearing it, but it has the uh, New Beverly cinema on the back of it, his movie theater. They're everything on 35 millimeter, never on digital. So I put that away in my keepsake box. And they were selling these, which were t-shirts for uh, Cliff Booth, Hollywood Stuntman, TV movies. And here's the new Beverly Cinema again. Good, mar good marketing, really, really good marketing. Another thing that they were uh, giving away, I don't know if this was to, to people who were reviewing it, press or something like that, but these, this bag is being, uh, uh, I've seen a couple of these, so I got one. But uh, I think they were giving these away to press kits. And here's another one that's not as nice. So I have a feeling these might have been sort of, you know, underground-y 
they're really kind of cheaply made. So I don't think these are actually real from the movie production. And I don't know what this is. Oh, oh. oh, that's cool. Oh, look at that. That's neat. Except Margot Robbie's not on it. <laughs> but, but that's really a neat poster. It's like vinyl. That's really neat. Look at that shirt. <laughs> wow. It's like I'm looking in the mirror. <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> that's cool. The, uh, there's another package. There's a couple of more things I haven't even opened yet. But one thing I bought, just because I liked the way it looked, was another Blu-ray. I guess these are a thing. They call them steel books. I've never heard of them, but that's a collector's thing. Like They can release a movie like 20 different times the same movie as long as they give them a different case. And I just really like this case because the posters all around Hollywood were like this. They look like kind of neon. So I bought this one. It wasn't cheap either. It was like 60 bucks for this thing. But I really like the cover of it. So I bought that, but I haven't opened it because you're not supposed to, <laughs> even though none of this stuff I bought to invest in, the stuff I bought because I really liked it just to, to collect it. But this is for a full page uh, ad that ran in the uh, New York Times. So I'm not going to unwrap this, but you could just see this is a newspaper ad. And this is just a full page newspaper ad from the New York Times. January 5th, 2020, so I'm assuming this was for the, that's Casa Vega, that's the restaurant that I showed you a little bit, of, a little while ago, the napkin. So this must be the, uh, oh, it's the Oscar thing to, uh, to uh, promote it for the Oscars. And it's funny, because here's New York, the Roxy Cinema, Tribeca, New Beverly Cinema. It's only three theaters that are actually showing it or being promoted. Roxy, the New Beverly, and the Arclight, which is the one I told you I went to, uh, where I showed you the introduction. We just refreshed the scene, move out a slew of things, and are gonna. This is actually the last batch of stuff I'm going to show you, and I'm sure I have other stuff tucked away somewhere. But this, this is something which is sort of something I didn't want, but I got this as a. I don't say I didn't want it, but I got it to be complete. Uh, there was a limited amount, as I showed you. The uh, I haven't even looked at this yet. As I showed you, the soundtrack was released. Well, before they released it. There was a limited amount of these things released at a record store called Amoeba in Hollywood. And this is the original version of the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood soundtrack. And it was a, gosh, they got whoever sell, well, they should have wrapped it up in gold for the amount of money I paid for it. But it was something I wanted to complete the, the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood collection. And this was the soundtrack, and it's very plain. It just says, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, um, written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. This is a printed low, you know, it's not, he didn't really sign it, it's a printed label. And on the back of it is a the whole soundtrack. And I, I'm curious what it looks like on the inside of it, because I don't, it has been opened. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this towards me so I can open it to see what's in it actually. So here's the soundtrack. Here's the insert to the soundtrack, which gives you the details of uh, the songs that were in it. And it's just a plain old soundtrack, you know? There were only, I forget how many, there was a limited amount of these made. Of course, they're not numbered because, well, maybe they are. Maybe it's by this barcode, I don't know. But I, I, there were supposed to be only like a thousand of them made or something like that. So, I, like I said, I got it just to be complete but I think it's a rather bland looking record, personally. I like the other stuff that's colorful, et cetera, et cetera. But I like it, glad I have it. Now, I'll show you these. These are just these are just silly things I picked up since. Reproduced after the movie came out. Spawn Movie Ranch, Spawn's Movie Ranch, and technically it was Spawn's with an apostrophe S, not Spawn. Um, that's the way it looked when uh, when Spawn's movie ranch where the Manson family were living actually existed. That was the sign. Spawn's, not Spawn, but everyone calls it Spawn. Come join the family. <laughs> and the X, get it? Like X on your head. But this is the actual address, and that was the phone number of the real George of the Spawn's ranch. Now, this is also very nerdy. 
This is a bottle of Vam. <laughs> Vam. <laughs> and this is a hair tonic. And I noticed this on the uh, dressing room table of Leonardo DiCaprio in the movie. It's like, Vam, I never heard of that. I like that. So Troy and I have this weird thing about vintage products. And, uh, and another vintage product, which I got a long time ago, because I wanted it, is this cologne, High Karate. Now, I'll tell you a little story about this. I like High Karate cologne. It smells like Avon. It smells like every other thing on the planet that was made in the 60s and the 70s. And I had a bottle of High Karate. I always wanted it. And I used to wear it before I went out and did the Helter Skelter tour, just because it's this weird kind of ritual I did whenever I did that tour. So I had this bottle in the box, and I thought when I was taking Tarantino out, because he told me he, you know, they're bringing 69 back to Los Angeles, and I got really, really excited. So when I took them out, I had a bottle of high karate I was gonna give it to him. And he noticed it, actually. I had it in my bag next to my driver's seat, and he goes, hey, you got a bottle of high karate? I said, well, actually, yeah. That was a gift to you, just to say good luck with your production. He was really, really psyched by it. And he said something about them licensing it for the movie, maybe licensing the commercial for high karate uh, in the movie. That didn't happen, but maybe it will happen in whatever extended version they ultimately release. But I still use it occasionally, on special occasions. I'll show you this because we actually got to go to the Academy Awards. And I think it's probably the last Academy Awards, really. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, uh, you know, we, my friend Kathy, a guy gave us her tickets for the Oscars. And we got to go to the Oscars, like the red carpet, the whole bit. And these are souvenirs that I kept from the movie because from the Oscars because it was the day, you know, once upon a time in Hollywood was up for best picture. These were our tickets. These were our, our parking passes. So that was the date, Sunday, 9th, February, 2020, 5 p.m. at the Dolby Theater. And that was the day, the super spreader event. <laughs> right before they started shutting things down and everyone was hacking their guts out at the Oscars. Little do we know there was going to be two years of it. But, uh, but yeah. And this was the little souvenir handout that they gave us at the Oscars. And just, you know, featuring the different movies that were up for awards. The Irishman, Joker. So, and the Governor's Ball, which we weren't invited to. Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> but they did give us these, and we were, it's so funny. These little drinks that we got, these little metal straws, and we were like walking around with these, like 20 of these things <laughs> bulging in our pants. And we're like, oh my God, we're never coming to this again. So um, let's use it and use it and do it upright. And we did. And, uh, and that was like one of the greatest nights. It really was. It was the last fun night before everything went to uh, went to hell. And lastly, my friend Neil Robinson Robertson in uh, in Britain sent me these this this item. I don't really know what it is. He said it had to do with the movie, but whatever it is, it's absolutely you know it's 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 big, and I'm very anxious to see what this is. So Neil, thank you for your persistence and your generosity. Very much. And hey, let's see if I can get this thing open. It took us a minute. We finally um, got this thing out. <laughs> so and uh, of that. So, uh, so this is what was in that box. And uh, you're looking at this for the first time like I am. And look. Ooh, look. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Look. Ooh. Ooh, look. Whoa. Uh-oh. That's okay. That's just paper. Uh. But whatever this is. Oh my God, Nebraska Jim. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to put these down and get pick one up one at a time. Neil, these are awesome, and they're like really, they're really substantial. I want to say thick, but oh look at that, it's Tanner. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, can you put them in front of you? Yeah, but I can't. Oh, uh, okay. That's okay. Like that, cause, okay. Ooh. Tanner, can you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I gotta be so careful with these, and yeah, yet I gotta... Okay, let's stop. Let's stop, let's stop. This one is for... Now, they're, it looks like I'm just tossing them, but they're actually landing curled up on the floor behind me, so uh, so they're not getting banged up or anything. Colored by Deluxe. Look at that. Ringo Gringo. <laughs> wow. So these are like the Spaghetti Westerns that Rick Dalton was doing. God, oh, look at these. Wow. Huh. 
These are awesome. Yeah. Wow, Neil, you're so cool. Thank you. You're so generous because I know what you had to go through to get these to me. And, uh, and wow. The last one. Look at that. Comanche Uprising. Wow. Robert Taylor and Rick Dalton. These are cool. Neil, you're awesome. Thank you so much. These are really cool. Really cool. Now I hope one day we have walls to put these on. <laughs> we got to get, oh, wouldn't it be cool to get like one of the cars from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and then have these surrounding it and have a whole display? Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to, I got to sign off now because I, it's going to take me like all night to put this stuff away again. And I also got to get out of this thing because let me tell you, not no air escapes. <laughs> there, and nothing died to make this. This is absolutely like a, like a seal. Like I'm, I am like food sealed. But, um, but that's it. That's my collection. I've got stories from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but I'm not going to, I won't. Uh, bore you with that stuff because you probably heard him again. You've heard him before, and and Mike and actually Mike uh, Dorsey and I did a podcast about it, which I'll I'll put in the link below this video. It explains all about my involvement with that uh, and the, meeting up with Tarantino with the El Coyote and at uh, at the Sebring shop and going around with them. And anyway, it was just a great day, and it was great being involved with it, and it was great sharing these stories with you, and great collecting this stuff, and people being generous with with their with their generosity and giving me so much stuff and just thank you so much and i appreciate your time and i appreciate your attention and until next time bam oh one more thing before i forget this was the big payoff for me all right i have a double chin all right nobody notices that crap you heard me